finally, I've got a chance. My first sunset landscape photography shoot stroke video for quite a while. And uh, what have we got? Completely clear blue skies. <laughs> Still, I'm not gonna complain. I'm just gonna work with what I've got. It won't all be about the sunset, of course. I shall be looking for images you know, in the lead up in the hour, maybe hour and a half or even two hours before sunset. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. For the last few weeks, sunsets have been off the menu. <laughs> We've had a curfew here running from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. And uh, trying to get out somewhere to do a sunset shoot and then get home by 10 o'clock was just cutting it a bit tight. So I've been doing mostly daytime stuff, although my last couple of videos have actually been early mornings, but very close to home. The only way I could really do an early morning shoot now, the state of alarm here ended on the 9th of May. Today is the 11th of May, in case you're wondering. Uh, we weren't quite sure what that was going to mean for the curfew. And it, it means different things in different regions of Spain. Here in the Valencian region, we still have a curfew. But that curfew is now midnight until 6am. So it doesn't help me with sunrise shoots but does open up the possibility for some sunset shoots. So that's what I've decided to do. This is the first time I've had a chance to get out. And as I said, typically what we've got is completely clear blue skies, which are never the most inspiring for uh, sunsets or for anything actually. But uh, I'm a big believer that there's always an image to be had. So I'm gonna see what I can do. And of course, there will be images that I may be able to shoot, you know, sometime before sunset. Uh, second update. If you watched my last video, which was an early morning shoot, you may have uh, noticed me complaining about problems shooting video. And um, the video camera that I'm using is a GoPro and uh, it's been doing some really weird things. But I have decided to buy a new video solution it's on its way, but it hasn't arrived yet. And I didn't want to wait until it arrived before I came out again. So more on that in a later video. Oh, and uh, one more thing to mention. As it's now half, almost halfway through May and it's getting quite warm, I've declared summer. And that means short trousers. So fair warning to those of a sensitive disposition. My uh, pasty white legs are out. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> suitable point just for a stop off and a wait and I think there might be an image to take here of uh, this tree in a little while. Well, I'll turn you back this way because you're going to get blinded. It's also a nice place just to sort of stop and check out the views. So way out over that way we can actually see Alicante and you can see the the big hill which has got uh, the castle of Santa Barbara on it. Castilla de Santa Barbara. And then we've got views out to the mountains all the way over here. All the way across there. And of course that's roughly the direction that the sun is gonna be setting in. But uh, that's not gonna be for another hour and 45 minutes. And I'm thinking there might be an image here. We don't get a lot of really, really nice trees here, but I do like this one. 
And again, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to blind you pointing you this way. It's got a really nice shape to it and it spreads out. It's quite big. The only problem with it really is, is that you can't isolate it very well because it grows down very low to the hill. There's trees behind it that you can't completely remove. There's a tree off to one side, which for most angles encroaches on it. So I want to see if I can come up with a composition that will work even though I can't isolate it and have it with the sun behind it, the light coming through, because you can probably see, if I do point you down there, you can see it's already creating some nice shadow patterns in this kind of packed sand. So uh, I'm hoping that when the sun gets a bit lower, that the light's going to extend a bit further forward and that will create the foreground leading in. I think I've found a composition that I like here and because I can't isolate the tree completely, I'm isolating it kind of as much as I can, but making a feature where possible of the bits that I can't isolate. So for example, this is, this is the main tree here and I can't eliminate this tree from the, from the frame very easily. Um, what I'm just trying to do is make sure that there's a gap between this tree and this tree so that it stands out separately and I'm actually making it part of the composition. Can't really do much over this side with the way the trees come up behind some of the branches, but I'm just doing what I can with it. And all I'm really waiting for is the sun to come down a bit so that it creates longer patterns of light and shadow on the foreground because that'll give me my lead in lines in. There is actually a little bit of cloud up there. Um, you may be able to see. Just behind the tree. But it's just going to be a waiting game for, I don't know, maybe another 20 minutes or so. And then once that's done, I'll take this shot and then I'm going to move on and try to work out what I'm going to do for actual sunset. I've been waiting around here now for a good 20 minutes. The sun's coming down behind the tree. As it's coming down, it's moving across the scene over to, uh, well, the right of the scene as I'm looking at it from, from the camera. Um, and of course, as it's coming down to the right hand side, it means that the shadow and the light that's coming through the tree is moving over to the left, therefore creating more foreground interest for me. Now at the moment, there's that little bit of sort of patchy streaky cloud behind the tree. And I actually quite like that, even though I haven't got the light and the shadow on the foreground yet that I was hoping for. I'm going to take a shot now and then I'm going to hang in a little bit longer and see if I get a better foreground. Basically, I just don't want to miss the possibility of that little bit of cloud behind there, which actually could look quite nice. And now I'm just going to wait and see what happens for a little bit longer. I don't want to leave it too long. It's about an hour and 20 minutes until actual sunset. And I've got to find something to shoot. And in fact, of course, as is always the case here, the sun will disappear behind the mountains well before that. So I probably need to be heading off in the next 10 minutes or so to try and find my sunset composition.
Okay, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure we're going to get much in the way of an actual sunset shot. The more I'm looking at it, the way the, where the sun is going to set, it's going to be really difficult to get anything interesting. But uh, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for other scenes on the way back, and I think I've got one here. So out there, and you probably can't see, there's a slope with a little sort of tree sticking up on it. The edge of the slope and parts of the tree are illuminated and the background is quite dark and in shadow. So I'm thinking it might work as a bit of a contrasty scene. And I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a square crop. You almost certainly can't see this. So I'm zoomed right in. Focus on the tree. And there's a square crop, you never know, that might actually work. I've got no idea if you can see what I've just shot there, but I'm thinking boost the contrast a bit in post. And that might work as a nice simple image with a nice angle, a little bit of a feature, some fringing light, you never know. Very opportunistic shot, you won't be able to see it here, but on the hill over there, kind of this side of the, the mountain peak in the background, there's two people standing looking towards the mountain. I just thought that might make for an interesting shot, zoomed all the way in. Um, oh, they're going. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> They were just going. Just, I just saw them start to move. Did I get them? Did I get them? Let's have a look. Yes, I did. <laughs> did I get them sharp? Yes, I did. Uh, there's the people. That's obviously zoomed well in. And that's the image. It's got the 16 by nine crop lines on it because that's what I thought I was going to do it as. I don't know that it might go um, full size. But the people in the foreground and the, the mountain peak in the background with quite a nice bit of side light on it. Just thought it was a bit different. Almost didn't get it because I was spending too much time setting up the video side of things. <laughs> Still haven't got a clue what I'm going to do for sunset and we're going to lose the sun in a few minutes. I really don't know. At this point the GoPro decided it didn't want to play anymore and it shut down and wouldn't turn back on again. And to be honest, any other image I might have shot here would have been forced and probably not very good. So I decided to just watch the sun go down behind the mountains while bashing the GoPro against a rock to try to get it working again so I could record my outro segment. Okay, the bit about the rocks made up. Now that the sun's gone down with the, the lack of cloud, I'm not seeing any point in hanging around. Um, and actually, now that the sun's gone down, even though it's almost halfway through May, May the 11th, it is starting to feel a bit chilly around the, the arms and the pasty white legs. A donkey. <laughs> Good heavens, there's just a loud donkey. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like, share it on social media, leave me a comment. If you're new here and you've enjoyed this, don't forget to hit subscribe. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.